Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about epistogrammas and discus in the same tank. A couple of people have asked me questions about uh, seeing epistogrammas in my discus tanks and wondering how I'm doing that without problems. And uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. I'm going to explain to you uh, what I think are the best epistogrammas to put in with your discus just to add a little bit of color and a little bit of interest to your tank. So when we come back, we're gonna talk about that. Hang in there with me, we'll be right back. So epistogrammas are something that I have always put in my discus tanks and um, I don't really ever have issues with them. I've had a couple of aggressive epistos that will pick on other fish in the tank but never uh, be aggressive towards the discus. Now I have a couple of different ones in here. Unfortunately, you know, um, some of them come out and uh, some of them don't when you want them to. So just know that the reason why I have chosen epistogrammas in here is because it adds some really nice color. There's, uh, uh, you know, rummy nose tetras and that sort of thing that school over here on this side of the tank. They tend to stay on this side of the tank. There's a couple of other types of, uh, or one other type of tetra, excuse me, that's also in here. But I like the epistos because they do add a little bit of more interest to the tank and a little bit more color. And uh, as you can see uh, from this guy right here, here's another one right here. Uh, I'm gonna give you the names of these, but uh, they do really, really well. Um, they have great uh, hiding spots in the rocks. And uh, it seems to be a relationship that just has never ever been an issue. In fact, uh, keeping a couple of different epistos in here I thought was going to be a serious problem, but not even that has been a real problem at all. And you can see this guy down in here. I don't want to get too grainy on the, on the video here by zooming in too far, but you can see, uh, I think this is a McMaster here. I'm not positive on that. And the other one I think is a uh, double red Pisto, but I'll have to look those up to make sure, but I will put them down in the information area. But these guys, I, I've just never ever had any problems and I do keep them in all of my tanks. Uh, I have my wilds even uh, with the pistos in the tank and they seem to do really, really well. So uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a hit and miss uh, with the pistos. So you have to kind of look at uh, what you think uh, might go well as far as color in your tank and then you have to just kind of try them out if they don't work out and they're acting aggressive towards each other or they're acting aggressive towards other fish in the tank then you know you just remove them but basically um, I have not had any problems at all with any of them anytime I've ever added an Episto to the tank. What you want to do is you want to make some nice cave areas as you can see here with your hardscape so that uh, when your Episto's are in the tank they do have plenty of places to hide and stay out of sight especially if they're uh, aggressive towards each other. I haven't had like I said that situation happen. Uh, I've been very fortunate, uh, but uh, I really, I really believe that if you give them the kind of environment that they like, and uh, um, they will really just thrive in a discus tank. And uh, one of the things that I would tell you is uh, make sure that you are supplementing their food, though, because the discus food is rich and has all the things that they need, but you can get a little bit too much food in there and you can cause some bloat in these guys. That's one thing you wanna be careful of is not to overfeed to the point where there's so much food left over at the bottom because the pistos do not have a shutoff uh, as to 
uh, when they're going to uh, quit eating. Because of that situation, I've ended up with a couple of them with some really bad bloat where they haven't recovered from it. And uh, just something you want to keep in mind. But they do add some amazing color to your tank. And uh, I, I just think that they're absolutely beautiful as far as, uh, you know, they're South American fish. They uh, come from the same areas as discus. And uh, so therefore they do actually live together in the wild. So there's no reason why they can't live together in the tank as long as your tank is big enough. Now I have a bare bottom tank here and uh, that's pretty much all I use with my discus tanks these days. But uh, I do that because I find uh, it's just easier to keep the tank clean and uh, you can see anything at the bottom there that you might need to clean up when you're doing your weekly water changes and uh, you want to suck some of the uh, waste out of the tank. Um, don't leave extra food, like I said, though. That will create a problem for uh, Apistos especially. They are very susceptible to bloat issues and uh, you just don't want to have a situation where you are overfeeding and all of a sudden you know your fish is very very sick uh, because they're uh, they're bloated and uh, there's this uh, McMaster again here um, you just want to be careful uh, not to overfeed them and not to give them so much food that they um, you know, like I said, they don't have a natural instinct to quit eating. They will eat because they're opportunists. They'll eat as much as they possibly can find in the tank and they'll just keep eating it. And a lot of times, many of these uh, uh, foods that we're feeding are foods that uh, are going to swell up to two or three times the size as, uh, as they are before they go in the water and uh, that is just a natural uh, disaster waiting to happen uh, as that food swells up and these guys just have had too much and it swells up in their gut and creates a real serious problem. So be careful with that. And uh, as I said, uh, I have not had any problems with my epistogrammas and uh, I would tell you that uh, if you want to put a pistos in with your discus, it's absolutely not a problem to do it. Um, they like the same basic uh, temperatures. They like a lot of the same things as far as uh, uh, the environment that they're in. So yeah, you can uh, definitely do this without any issues whatsoever. Again, just being careful with the feeding portion of it and uh, looking for any aggression between other types of pistos with each other because that can happen sometimes. And if it does, then you're going to have to move them around. But as I said, I have not experienced that, so it's not something that I worry about. So as you can see, uh I have shown you that uh, discus and epistogrammas can live together. Now, that doesn't mean that that's going to work every time for everyone, but I have shown you that I even have two different varieties of epistos in here and they do just fine. What I would tell you is this, if you want to be sure that your epistos are uh, going to work well in your discus tank is maybe just put one really colorful pisto in there. That way uh, you know that there isn't going to be any issues between two different types of epistos for territory and those kinds of things. Now I've gotten very lucky in this situation and these guys have worked out really well for me but it doesn't mean that that's going to happen every time. In fact, you could get the same two uh, varieties and have a problem on your hands that uh, is not happening in my tank, but it's not a guarantee uh, either way. So try one, uh, see what happens, then try adding another one um, and see how that goes. And if uh, uh, things seem to be going well, you're just adding some absolute beautiful colors to your tank and some interest to your tank. They're fun little fish to watch. 
Uh, they're very different than most fish because their 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 uh, personalities are so diverse and so interesting. The way they hide, the way they pop out from the rocks uh, uh, in the lower areas of the tank near the, the uh, entrances to like little small caves and cracks and crevices in the tank. So it's, it's just kind of a fun thing to watch. Thank you for joining me today. I hope I uh, answered that question for those of you who have asked. Uh, leave your comments down below here. Give me a thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe and also share with your friends. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, like I said, I will get back to you within 24 hours. Hopefully, I typically can, and I will do that. So thanks for joining me. We will see you on the next one. Until then, we are out of here. Have fun and enjoy the hobby.